and we put a lot of work into this. I know it's only a song, but think about it. It's about the cross, and it's not about the shepherds or the wise men or the, the manger. It, it was about the cross, wasn't it? Um, they've worked very, very hard, and I'm really proud of them. Nancy and Naomi help us. And there's one thing I want you to know about this. Uh, Tommy or Lottie. Um, what, um, these don't come with instructions to do this, do this, do this. You do the song. The kids come up with the motions. As I just think that's fantastic. This group of kids have got so much talent. They just need someone to lead them in the right direction. I'm really thankful for Angie for taking the kids, Carolyn, uh, last night. I heard all kinds of great reports about it. Uh, one of us can't do it. It takes all of us. Um, they've worked really hard. They will be doing uh, It's About the Cross, and then they will do Rudolph. <laughs> okay, all righty. We are ready. Give us just a second. Number six has to go to the third one. It's not just about the shepherds or the bright and shining star. Oh, it's not all about the wise men who traveled from afar. It's about the cross. It's about my sin. It's about how Jesus came to be born once so that we could be born again. It's about the stone. Rolled away so that you and I could have real life someday. It's about the cross, it's about the cross. It's not just about the present.
Do you recall the most famous reindeer of all?
worship you. We worship you. O Son of God, Emmanuel, we worship you. We worship you. Follow the star to a place unexpected. Would you believe? After all, we projected a child in a manger. Lowly and small, the weakest of all, unlikeliest hero. Wrapped in his mother's shawl, just a child. Is this who we've waited for?
I'm looking for us. Somebody go get those kids. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody re reach down and get those kids. Will you? Come here, kids. Come up here. Come, come on. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The only other place I know they let me sing is at the nursing home. <laughs> they let me sing way back in the back with Brother Gene. Let me get back here with Brother Gene. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Brooke, you're the star. Y'all you, you, got to get it. Don't y'all get around me. I'll mess y'all up. Amen. Michael, turn me, turn my mic off. Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Amen. I tell you what, listen, we got those words on the screen? Have we got those words on the screen? Oh, beautiful star of Bethlehem. What? It's in there? Are you going to be able to get them up, Michael? Amen. If you are, and you will, everybody in the building, if you're able. There we go, you got it.
the Lord good? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. We sound pretty good, didn't we? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Is the Lord good? Yes. Huh? Yes. Has He been good to anybody? Yes. Anybody glad for another Christmas season that the Lord bless you with? Praise God. Amen. I'm helping the body, but the sound mind. All the kids welcome. Thank God. Amen. Praise God. You've got a whole lot to praise in the back. You've got a whole lot to give it glory in the back. If you're alive and in your right mind, and your kids are healthy, and you're healthy, you've got a lot to praise in both. I'm telling you good. You got a whole lot to give him glory for. My, my, my. Don't you dare. Don't you dare sit on your praise. Glory to God. I tell you, he's been too good for you. Been too good to sit on your praise now. I tell you, he's a great God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Go with me to Luke's Gospel, chapter 2, this morning. Luke, chapter number 2. And that's where we'll take our text this morning. I appreciate all of you coming today. This last Sunday before Christmas, before Christmas comes, why well, we're so thankful that you came here today in this house. I know you could have went elsewhere, done other things, but you chose to come here today, and so we are thankful and grateful for you being here today. And I trust you've been blessed thus far. I can leave now and say that it's been a good place for me to be in. So I appreciate His presence in this house here today. Amen. Amen. Luke chapter number two this morning, and I want to. Pick up where I left off last Sunday. Last Sunday, we talked about keeping Christ in your Christmas. And we, we covered Luke chapter 2. I looked through this and we covered most of the verses from verse 7 to verse 38 last Sunday. We covered most of that in our Christmas message last Sunday. Now, I want to pick up where we left off last Sunday morning. And this morning, I want to pick up in verse number 41 of Luke chapter number 2. Now, before I read that, I want you to understand now that there has been 12 years as passed between verse 40 and verse 41. Jesus, in our text, is already 12 years old. So we want to pick up and we want to carry on just a little bit deeper into what we were talking about last Sunday. Luke chapter number 2. Verse number 41, and let's read. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. And when they had fulfilled the days, as they returned, the child Jesus tarried behind in Jerusalem, and Joseph and his mother knew not of him. But they, supposing him to have been in the company, went a day's journey. And when they sought him among their kinsfolk and acquaintance, and when they found him not, they turned back again to Jerusalem, seeking him. And it came to pass that after three days, they found him in the temple. Sitting in all, sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions. This morning, I, I want to take my text this morning from those verses of scripture, really probably sitting on verse number 44. And this morning, I, I want to talk to you about the danger of supposing with the subtitle, Losing Jesus in the Feast. Now, if you will notice in our text this morning that the parents of Jesus, Mary and Joseph, 
went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. It was their custom every year to go up to the feast. And they would bring their, their sacrifices to the temple. It was a time of celebration, festivities, a time of eating, a time of, of joy, a time of, of celebration. It was a very special time in Jerusalem where multitudes of people would gather to celebrate the feast of Passover. Families would travel long distances just to get to this celebration. You see, it was a very special occasion. It was held only once a year, and it was a big ordeal for those people in that time and era. It was a time of celebration. It was a time they celebrate celebration of freedom, as they would no doubt go back in history to the first Passover when God brought the Israelites out of Egyptian slavery by the slaying of the lamb and the blood of that lamb. No doubt they would gather together and they would talk about how that, how that the Israelites were instructed by Moses from God to slay that lamb of one year old and, and take the blood and, and dip it in, put it in the basin and take the hyssop and dip the blood, dip that hyssop in that blood and, and sprinkle that blood over the doorpost and, and the lintels of every Hebrew home. And God said, when I see the blood, I will pass over. Hence, the Passover. Now, I want you to get in your mind this morning the setting that we're talking about. The festivities, the celebration, the excitement of everyone. Every age group was excited about this time of year. The young and the old and the middle aged alike. And after days of celebrating, the Bible says, after, after several days of the festivities and after days of celebrating, the Bible says that Mary and Joseph and all their kinsfolk and acquaintances made their way back home. Now, they had traveled, the Bible says, one day, somewhere around 24 hours later, they discovered that they had lost Jesus. They supposing him to have been in the company of their church folk, or I mean not their church folk, but rather their kinsfolk and their acquaintances, but to their dismay, to their shock, they had lost Jesus in the feast. Now that's the first thing that I want to bring out in our text this morning is that Mary and Joseph, those who had an intimate relationship with him, those who knew him better than anyone else, those who were the very parents of Jesus were the very ones who lost the Savior. They were the ones, they lost Jesus at the feast. The first thing I want you to notice this morning is where they lost Jesus. They lost him in the feast. They lost him at a time of celebration, at a time of festivities, at a time when everybody was partying, at a time of the feast. Now I can remember years gone by about this time every year that we would begin to prepare the Christmas message and down through the years we were blessed to be able to tell the story about the little boy who stood, who was standing in front of the live nativity scene and how that he would reach up to his mama and pull his mama's hand and say, Mama, I see, I see, I see the sheep, I see the goats, I see the donkey, and, and Mama, I see all the animals, but Mama, who's the baby? Well, if I fast forward to today, that same little boy would reach up and pull his mama's arm and he would not say, who's the baby, but he would have to say, Mama, where's the baby? Because somewhere we have lost Jesus in our festivities. Somewhere we have lost Jesus in our Christmas. Somewhere we have lost Christ in our Christmas. Now you know as well as I do that we are living in the hour that we have already taken him out of the nativity scenes. You see, he has offended just a select few folk and they have decided now that he has offended 
them long enough and now they have taken Christ out of the nativity scene and trying to take Christ out of our Christmas. You see, we have lost Christ. We have lost Jesus in our feast. I was watching again the other day, as I, as I normally do Sundays, I was watching Bill O'Reilly again, and the other evening, now, now the military have taken down the nativity scene. Jesus now, all of a sudden, has offended our military. I really don't understand that, but folks, you've got to agree with me that we have lost Jesus in our feast. They, they, listen, they're not offended at the animals. They're not offended at Mary. They're not offended at Joseph. They're not even offended at Santa Claus. They're not even offended at all. I'll tell you who they're offended at. They're offended at Christ in the Christmas. That's who they're offended at. And if the world has its way, they will take Christ out of our Christmas. The world doesn't even want you to say Merry Christmas. Oh God, Merry Christmas now. The world wants you to say Happy Holidays. They don't want you to say Merry Christmas. You know why? Because their ambition and their goal is to take Christ out of Christmas. Oh, are you listening to what I'm saying in this building this morning? Somewhere along the way, we have lost Christ. We have lost Jesus in our feast. We have lost Christ in our Christmas. Are you listening to me? Just this past Friday, I was I, 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 I was watching the local news. Now you get this. And they had a story on their newscast about a public school in the state of New York. And what they did, they took the song Silent Night and they changed the words of that song. They took all the names of God, of Christ, of Jesus and Savior. Anything to do with Jesus, they took it out of the song. They rewrote the song and made the kids sing the song without mentioning the name of Jesus. Can I say it one more time? That we have lost Jesus in the feast. We have lost Jesus in the, in the Christmas. We've lost Christ in our Christmas. Now you can go to the malls and you can go to the restaurants and you'll not hear too much about Silent Night, Holy Night. You'll hear more about Frosty the snowman was a jolly old soul. You'll hear songs like I'm dreaming of a white Christmas. You'll hear songs like I saw mommy kissing Santa Claus last night. You'll hear songs like if we can make it just through December. I mean you can hear every song coming and going but somewhere along the way you gotta, you gotta agree with me that in this hour brother we have lost, we have lost Jesus in the midst of the feast. We have lost Christ in the Christmas and somebody needs to rise up and say enough's enough. You may take him out of the world, but you're not going to take him out of my home. You're not going to take him out of my church. We have lost Christ in the Christmas. We are living in an hour where they're doing everything they possibly can to take Christ out of the Christmas. Preach on, preacher. I got to preach a little while today. Now y'all hang with me just a little while. I got to thinking about that again. And, and, I, and I was sitting there yesterday. And I got to thinking about, well, bless God. If you take Christ out of Christmas, all you got left is a M-A-S, a mass, or a mess. And a mass of nothing is what you got left. When you take Christ out of Christmas, you don't have a Christmas story. Because he's the reason for the season. He's the reason we celebrate our Christmas is because of Christ. Amen. Now Joseph and Mary, listen, they lost Jesus. It ought to cause each one of us to look on the inside and be sure he is there. The ones, the ones who loved him best lost him out of their lives. I said the ones who left him best lost him out of their lives. We cannot assume that years gone by we knelt at an altar and repented of our sin 
Jesus and, and went on our merry way year after year after year after year and assumed everything was all right. Brother, hear this preacher. If it is possible for Mary and Joseph to lose Jesus out of their lives, out of the, if it is possible for them to lose him out of, out of the feast, if it's possible for them to lose him out of their lives, it is possible for you and I to lose the same Jesus out of our lives. Now here's the danger. Here's the danger. The danger is we we can learn the language. We can learn the motions. We can learn how to go through the formalities. We can learn how to do it all. But if you and I are not careful, we can lose that keen edge. We can lose that desire. We can lose that anointing. We can lose the blessing out of our own soul and have a form of godliness and deny the power thereof. Mary and Joseph lost Jesus at the feast. Don't lose Jesus at your feast. Don't lose Christ out of your Christmas. Have you lost, have you lost Jesus in your marriage? Have you lost Jesus in your family? There's a lot of folk lose him trying to make a living. They get so involved in making a living, they fail to live. Have you lost Jesus? Have you lost Jesus in your marriage? Have you lost him in your family? We're living in a dangerous hour when folk lose the Christ in Christmas. If Mary and Joseph could lose him, well, I'm, I'm going against a lot of theology today, but I'm crossing, I'm crossing the line today. I, I'm crossing all the theological barriers this morning. Look at that job. I'm not here to win no prayer popularity contest. I'm trying to shake somebody up and make you realize, listen, listen, if Mary and Joseph got so caught up in the festivities and in the activities of the world, good God Almighty, you and I, if we are not careful, can lose Christ out of our Christmas. And when we lose him out of our Christmas, we have nothing left but a mass. I'll leave that alone. I'll preach right there. Hallelujah. I'll leave that alone. We'll go there. Thank you, Jesus. This song's up right there. Probably leave that alone. That's another song another time. Now watch that. Watch, watch that. Come, come here. Let's go. Come on. Let me, let me plow a little bit. Come on. Give me liberty here this morning. When we see, when, when we see where they lost him, we say they lost him at the feast. But now, when? When did they lose Jesus? When did they lose Jesus? They lost him on their homeward journey. They lost him on their way home. They realized they lost Jesus. Listen, listen to me, listen, 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 listen. What good would it be to go home without Jesus? There's no need to go home without him. They lost him on their homeward journey. And some of you have lost Jesus out of your home. You can have a beautiful home on the outside and hell on the inside. Don't lose Jesus out of your home. Don't lose Christ out of your Christ, out of your Christmas. Just like Mary and Joseph, you need to stop and realize, hear this preacher, no need going on toward home without Jesus. Because unless the Lord build the house, they that labor, labor in vain. I don't know about you, but I'm too close home to lose Jesus now. I'm on the, I'm on the downhill side of this thing. I can almost see the lights of that city. I'm too close home. We're too close home to lose Jesus now. We're about to walk on streets of gold. They may take Jesus out of the nativity scenes. They may take his name out of the Christmas songs, but I refuse to let them take him out of my heart and out of my mouth. We refuse to let them take Jesus out of our worship. We refuse to let them take Jesus out of Christian fellowship.
fellowship, worship center. I come to tell somebody, gather your family together on December 24th and December 25th and to clown your household. We will not lose Christ out of our Christmas. Declare to your household, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We will keep Christ in our Christmas. And we don't give a flip who we offend. We are not concerned who it offends. We will not lose Christ out of our Christmas. Glory to God. You got kids at home? You better gather them in there and give them something they can hold on to. You better put an image in their mind that they'll never forget about Christmas because in a few more years down the road, it'll be a thing of the past. Kids will raise up and they'll say, who's Jesus? Who, who's that? I, I never, I'll never, i never forget. I, I, I was working with a fellow one time and, 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 and to my dismay, and brother, he was ashamed. He said, my, my son, he said at Christmas time we was talking about Jesus and he said, my son, he must have been, I don't know, two, three, four years old by that time. He looked at his dad and said, Daddy, who in the world's Jesus? He said, You could have shot me with a gun to make me no better. We can lose Christ out of our Christmas. Mary and Joseph lost Jesus on their journey home. On their homeward journey, they got caught up and they lost Jesus. On their way home. Well, I hope I'm, I, I'm talking to somebody in this house here right now. I don't know about you, but I'm too close home to give up now. Good God Almighty. Honey, I've already seen the lights of that city. I, I've already seen the, the streets of gold. Oh, good God Almighty. The walls of Jasper. Honey, I'm not about to lose him right now. Not at this stage of the game. I've been here too long and too late. You can't do anything to make me lose Jesus now. But I'm on the homeward stretch. And I'm on the downhill side of this thing and I'm on my way to glory come hell or high water I'm going to hold on to Jesus and I'm going to keep Christ in my Christmas and as far as me and my house we will serve the Lord yeah. Michael gather them up Christmas Eve brother get Michael and Callie and gather them up around the tree and tell them all about the Christmas story Oh, God, tell them all about this baby that came some 2,000 years ago with a mission and a purpose. He had one purpose and one mission, and that was to go to an old rugged cross and shed his life's blood so that I could have life and have it more abundant. His mission was to go to an old rugged cross and shed his life's blood, and I could be forgiven and have all the shame and the guilt and the condemnation washed out of my way and washed out of my life, and in the mind of God. I don't have a past any longer. I've been washed in the blood of the Lamb of Almighty God. The sinless Son of the living God came. He came as a baby in a manger. But thank God he went to an old rugged cross and he ascended on the third day and he's sitting at the right hand of the Father right now. And one day after a while he's coming back in clouds of glory. I said he's coming back in clouds of glory. And he's coming after those that are homeward bound. I said he's coming after those and her hold her bound has got their eye on the finish line and got their eye on a city. Oh, good God Almighty. Got their eye, got their eye heaven bound and refused to turn to the right or to the left. Now, they may take Jesus out of everything, but they ain't going to take him out of my heart and my mouth. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. I'm not going to lose Christ out of my Christmas. <laughs> Praise God, preacher. You're crazy with a bit mug today. I know it. Wait till Christmas. You think I'm crazy now? Carol Ann might buy me something. Then again, she might not. Watch that. Watch. Watch. When they discovered Jesus was gone, here's what I want you to hear. Here, listen. What did they do? Now let's go to the what. What did they do when they discovered Jesus was gone? They were, listen, they were, they, they were the ones who had him. And they were, they were the ones who had to go and find him. <laughs> because they were the ones who lost him. <sighs> they didn't try to blame somebody else. 
They were willing to take their own responsibility, face their own responsibility. They didn't, they didn't try to blame one another for losing Jesus. I said they didn't try to blame one another for losing Jesus. I said they didn't try to blame one another for losing Jesus. I said they didn't try to blame their kinsfolk for losing Jesus. They didn't try to blame their other children for them losing Jesus. Oh, I don't know if I got anybody with me right now or not. They took responsibility. And when we lose Christ out of our Christmas, we can't blame somebody else. What they did. What they said. We need to stop thinking about ourselves and be more concerned about the influence and the impact we have on our children and our children's children. When they realized Jesus was God, what did they do, preacher? They went back to where they lost him and they sought for him. Some of you need to go back to where you lost him. And for some of you, you may have to go back to your childhood. Let me get down here. Let me get down here a little while. Some of you may have to go back to them Bible school days. Some of you may have to go to this place or that place, but somewhere you lost him, and somewhere you got to turn and go back to where you lost him. When Mary and Joseph realized they lost Jesus, the only thing they could do they knew was to stop and turn and go back to where they lost him. I don't know if I got anybody with me today or not. I know this is not your traditional Christmas message, but I'm not a, a traditional pastor. Are you still with me? Are you still with me? They took the responsibility for their own actions. They didn't blame anybody else. You cannot blame anybody for what they've done, what they've said. If they haven't put you on the cross and crucified you, you've got no excuse for losing Jesus. When they realized they lost Jesus, what did they do? They stopped and went back to where they lost him. Hallelujah. And they never, they listen, and the Bible says uh, they not only went back, but they sought for him. They went back and they sought for him. The Bible says they were, they were a day's journey when they realized that they had lost Jesus and it took them three days to find him. After three days of seeking him, it's not a, it, it isn't as automatic as you think. After three days of seeking him, they found him. Jeremiah 29, 13, and you shall seek me and find me when you shall search for me with all your heart. Let me say it one more time. One more time. I'm moving on. They were the ones who had him. They had him. They were the ones who had to go back and find him. Now, let's go a little bit deeper. We saw when they lost Jesus. They lost him in the field. We, we, we saw when they lost Jesus. They lost Jesus on their homeward journey. We saw what they had to do when they realized they lost Jesus. They had to stop, go back, and seek for him. But it took one day to lose him and three days of seeking to find him. Amen. Add that up yourself. Let me take. Let me. Let me, let me, I never, let, me let me go one more moment here. I'm almost done. Believe it or not, one more moment. Let me take one moment and look at the how. How did they lose him? How in the world did you lose your child? <laughs> I don't know what some of y'all think. I don't know, but I like to try it sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Big Carol went to our parents' office. Somebody always kept bringing them back home. I don't want to let God wrong people. And you drop them off and they bring them right back. <laughs> How did they lose Jesus? They lost him in the crowd. I said they lost him in the crowd. In, in the midst of all the festivities, in the midst of all that was going on in Jerusalem, in the midst of the crowd, they had lost Jesus. 
While they were there, there was a lot going on. And they had business to take care of. There's a lot of spiritual festivities going on. I mean, look at me, look at me. You can lose him in the crowd. They got so involved in the crowd. There was a lot of things in the crowd. And there's a lot of things today in the crowd that will take you away from Jesus. So I come to tell you, beware of the crowd. The crowd you hang around with tells a whole lot about you. So beware of the crowd. Because in a crowd, you can find all kinds of people. So beware of those who you get involved in things that take you away from Jesus. Because not everybody in your life will lead you to Jesus. Some people in your life are there to help you lose Jesus, not find Jesus, because everybody in your life is not God's sin. King Saul said like this. Saul said, God has departed from me and answers me no more. Saul wasn't just anyone. He was anointed of God, chosen of God. And somehow, somewhere, he became so involved with the crowd. And when it came down to the end of his life, he said, I have played the fool. In 1 Samuel 15, 24, he said, I have sinned, I have transgressed, I have feared the people, the crowd, and obeyed their voice. Beware, don't lose Jesus in the crowd. Amen. I mentioned this last week. The saddest part of this whole Christmas story is when Mary was ready to have the Christ child and her and Joseph went to the inn. But they were told because of the crowd there was no room in the inn. No room for the Christ of Christmas. Don't lose him in the crowd. I know they're doing it, but that don't mean you got to do it. Don't lose him in the crowd. One last place. I'm closing with this. One last place. I want you to see. One last place. I want you to see where they lost Jesus. One more place where they lost Jesus. Not only lost him in the feast. Watch this, watch this. But they lost him in the most unexpected places in the temple. Why? In the church. Why? How in the world do you lose Jesus sitting in the church? I said, how do you lose Jesus sitting in the church? They lost him in one of the most unexpected places. Of all places, the temple. There are many that sit in the church every Sunday. And they continue their journey. They continue their profession. They continue their religious activities as though everything is all right. But in reality, Jesus is gone. They have lost Jesus. You can lose Jesus in the church. Go home assuming, supposing everything is all right, but in reality, there's no real prayer life. There's, re no, there's, there's no real devotion life. There's no real worship. There's no real praise. There's real, no real peace. There's no real joy. Have you lost Jesus in your Christmas? We can come to church. And just because you sit in a pew in a church doesn't make you a Christian. Right. Many people sit in a pew every Sunday and they've lost Christ out of the Christmas. Because there's no real prayer life. There's no real devotion time until there's a crisis. There's no real worship. There's no real praise. There's really no real peace in you. I, I just, I just come from. I'm, I'm not, I'm, I got to have it come. And there's no real joy. And for some reason they, and somehow they, there they lost him sitting in the church. 
This ain't very popular Christmas message, is it? A lost one sitting right in the church. I'm trying to help you. I don't want you to lose Christ out of your Christmas. I don't want you to lose Jesus in the festivities and the activities of the holiday season. Because Jesus is still the reason for the season. If it wasn't for him, we wouldn't have a season. If it wasn't for him, we wouldn't have a reason to, jo to be joyful for. Living in this old hell cursed world, what the name of God is. If, if our hope is in this world, we would be all men most miserable. Michael, if this was all there was to lie, God help every one of us because we are of all men most miserable. We all ought to go out and find us a gun somewhere and in this thing right now because life is not worth living. If Jesus is not in the midst of my goings about, I've got to have the Christ in my Christmas. Because he's the reason I can celebrate the season. And the only reason I can celebrate. I can't celebrate because of how much material things I have. Because I'm going to leave them. I can't celebrate because of how much money I have. I can't celebrate anything except who's in me. And that is the son of the living God, Christ, the hope of glory. Hallelujah. And I am determined more than anything else in 2014, at the end of 2013, I am going to keep him in my Christmas. And when I see you, I'm going to say, Merry Christmas. Hallelujah. Suck it down the red pipe. Suck it down the red pipe world. Merry Christmas. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you still with me? I said, are you still with me? I said, are you still with me? I said, are you still with me in the house? Have I got anybody know what I'm talking about in this house in this morning? Have I got anybody in here this morning? You can lose Jesus in the church easier than you can anywhere else. How, preacher? Because you come here and you hear the word of God, and the word of God is the voice of God, and you hear the message every time you come, and you do one of two things. You either reject it or accept it. And for somehow people have learned to adopt, accept what they like, reject what they don't like. If it doesn't sound good or feel good, then folk reject it. If it doesn't fit their lifestyle, they don't don't want nothing to do with it. But here is the reality. We are not going to give an account to the church, to the pastor, or to the prophet, but to Almighty God himself. You can lose Jesus sitting right in the church. But now here's the good news. I've got to give you the good news before I send you out into the world. The good news is that Mary and Joseph Listen, we're not content to go on without Jesus. Amen. 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 They were not content to go on without Jesus. They lost him. They missed him. They knew what it was to be in his presence. And they could not and would not go on. Does that describe you? Does that describe you? The good news is they found him. And the better news is so can you. <laughs> but they found him only when they sought for him. When did they find him? When they sought for him. How did they find him? Oh God. They had to leave their kinsfolk and acquaintance and go back to where they lost him and search for him with their whole heart. Where did they find him, preacher? Right where they lost him. Right where you're sitting this morning. In the temple. They couldn't find him where they were. I said they couldn't find him where they were. They had to go back to where they lost him. Some of you are trying to find him where you are. You're not going to find him where you are. 
If you've lost Christ out of your Christmas, you, 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 you're not going to find him. Well, you are. You have to go back to where you lost him. They were a day's journey from him. And it took three days of searching to find him. Anybody see how dangerous this thing is when you lose Christ? It, 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 it's, it's dangerous. You, you still ain't in here with me. You, you still don't want to go there with me. They were one day's journey from him. And the danger of it was it took three full days of seeking and searching to find him. Yes, amen. Bring it, John. It, 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 like it, 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 it's dangerous to be out of this world without Christ at this time of the year, without him in our Christmas, without him in our heart. It's dangerous to be in this world. You're sitting right where they found him. They found him right back in the temple where they lost him. You can find him right where you're sitting, right here in the house of the living God, where he chose to reveal himself. This is not just a church house. Look at me. This is a meeting place. A meeting place of the eternal. This is where we come to meet with the eternal. He turns a social gathering into a meeting place. And we can meet with the one from glory. We can meet with Jesus in this place. They lost him, but they found him. And the good news is so can you. If you just realize he's not there. I said if you'll just realize he's not there. Some of, you, some of you pride, pride still in your way. Pride go up before a fire. And when it comes to eternal life and come to Jesus, pride had to go. I swallowed my pride back in 1984 on a Sunday morning. For about 300 people, I swallowed every bit of pride I had. Because, man, I knew I needed him. <laughs> and I asked last Sunday, I told Brother Gary, most of you, about all of you, every one of you that's born again can remember the first Christmas you spent with him. You never forget the first Christmas when Christ was in it. Wow. Can you remember, man of God? Can you remember that first Christmas season? I remember that day, that, 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 that Easter Sunday morning down here in this double wide trail and old Union Hall. We had to defume because of the cigarette smoke and the tobacco and all that. We had to defumigate it, open the doors and the windows. But you moseyed in there on one, on one Easter Sunday morning. Bless God Almighty, come in one way and didn't leave the same way you came. And I've watched you from that day, and you have done nothing but climb the mountain of God over and over and over again. Oh, I know there's been some good times. I also know there's been some bad times. There's been some hard places. But you can stand and testify this morning that Jesus has been in every move you've ever made. He's been there when nobody else was there. He has been your El Shaddai. He has been your Emmanuel, God with us. He's the one that moved out of the Holy of Holies and moved on the inside of Mike McCoy. And now Mike McCoy gathers his family up and tells his family, we're not going to lose Christ in our Christmas. We're going to hold on to Christ and put him in our Christmas. And if we put him in our Christmas, then everything is going to work out fine. It's all going to come out to our good because all things work together to the good to build that oh God Almighty. Somebody give him a praise in this morning. So I try to let this thing up. I get out of here. And leave you all alone. Amen. Listen. You may never miss Christ as long as the sun shines on your parade. But your day, it will come to an abrupt close as darkness and death and eternity will roll over your soul. You will miss the Christ need. The good news is you don't have to assume you can know. They supposing him to be with the others. You don't have to suppose, you don't have to assume you can know. Job knew. When Job come down, when he thought he was going to die, 
In Job 19, 25, Job said this. Job said, I know. I know my Redeemer liveth. <laughs> and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. Job knew. You can know. Paul knew. Oh, help me. Paul, knew. Paul said when he was chained to the wall and in the last moments of his life, when he, when he heard the footsteps of the Roman soldiers coming to get him, to lead him away, to decapitate him, to take his head off of his shoulders, he told Timothy, he said, Timothy, my departure is at hand, and I am ready to be offered. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course, and I have kept the faith. And Timothy, I want you to know this. In 2 Timothy 1 and 12, but Timothy, I know in whom I have believed, and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. You don't have to assume you can know. I know Christ is in my Christmas, do you? I know Christ is in me, Emmanuel, do you? Listen, please, listen to me. Don't allow the devil to tell you one thing and reality will tell you something else. You may have lost your way in your relationship with Christ and the enemy is saying, don't worry about it, just pick yourself up and go on. But what if, what if Mary and Joseph would have just got up the next morning and went on. Would they have found Jesus? No. They had to stop and they knew they had to go back to their mother. And for three days, days wondering where their child would be. Three days of endless search until they found him. Question. They were one day's journey away. It took them three days of searching to find him. How long has he been searching for you? Not an earthly time. He is the father of time. How long has he been searching for you? I come to shake you this morning. I come to awaken you. If you would want a real uplifting Christmas message, you should have been here last Sunday. I'm not going to be responsible for you losing Christ out of your Christmas. I'm going to do whatever I can do to stop you and ask you the question. Jesus, nobody else. Old Sarah, the little brother. <coughs> Listen to what I'm going to say. Listen to me. This is what I'm going to say. We're going to close. We're going to go home. We're going to go set. Birth of Christ for these next few days. Before I before you go, I got a question I gotta ask you.
you make room for Jesus? Pray. Don't lose Jesus in the feast, the festivities. Don't lose Christ in your Christmas. A commitment. And don't assume that he's there. Know that he's there. Today I give you the greatest of all opportunities that an individual could ever, ever have. And that is to receive one gift from God to you. And that is His Son, Jesus Christ. I stand before you today, offer you the greatest gift you'll ever receive in this life. It's the gift of eternal life. lost Christ out of your Christmas part of your pride get him back in your Christmas today on this Lord's Day right here in the temple right here in the church house where he's called will you do me a favor will you not get up and leave this room right now I'm asking you for your respect respect for the word respect for the precious Holy Spirit respect for the people in this house. Don't leave this building right now. Please, stay put until this altar calls over. Okay? I ask you, please, today, get Christ back in your Christmas. Stand with me all over the house, won't you? Every head bowed, every eye closed in the building. I, I just... I don't, I don't want to tarry for just a few moments, but I need you. I need you. Church, I need you praying. People here need to make some decisions here today. Christian people need to search themselves and see if Christ is still in the Christmas. If you're this morning and you need Jesus in your Christmas, will you come today? And receive the greatest gift you could ever receive. That's Christ, the hope of glory. Don't leave here today assuming that He's there. Have you lost Jesus out of your marriage? Have you lost Him out of your family? Have you lost Him homeward bound? Have you lost Him in the crowd? Today, will you come all over the building and say, Lord, say, Come all over the building. If you want eternal life, come. If you want Jesus, come. Right now, just like you are. Not when you quit this or quit that. Not when you do this or do that. But come just like you are right now. If you're in this building, come. Come. Christian, come. Come. Child of God, come. Come. Make sure today. Come. Come on. Come on. Man, will you come? Sir, will you come today? Will you come? God's ever give humanity, and that is the gift of His Son, that is the gift of eternal life. Will you come? Come on. Come on. Come on. Don't assume anything. Come on. Come on. No, 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 that you know. That you know, no, that you know. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. You need Him this morning. Come on. Come on. He'll satisfy you. Come on. He's the only one that can satisfy that moment. Come on. Come on. Just like you are. 
as they apply themselves to the little shepherd. What needs to be done? Now, Father, breathe them on. Bless them. Bless them. Overwhelmingly bless them. Let your favor rest upon them. I bind every diabolical scheme of every demon in the horn of hell today, right now, in Jesus' name. I release.